The leaders of 10 out of 11 constituent government parties convened a media briefing in Colombo today. Sri Lanka Freedom Party members were also present. There was an internal struggle on our side before Gotabe Rajapaksa was nominated as the presidential candidate. Basil Rajapaksa wanted to be the presidential candidate. They tried to use the Pudujana Perumana as their personal asset to become a candidate. As a group that backed Mahinda Sulanga movement, we felt that if Mahinda Rajapaksa wasn't the presidential candidate, it should be Gotabe Rajapaksa. This obstructed Basil Rajapaksa from achieving his dreams to a certain extent. After losing the elections on the 8th of January 2015, he met former President Mahinda Rajapaksa and requested to appoint him as the Prime Minister. But Mahinda Rajapaksa didn't like it. He then left the country without informing former President Mahinda Rajapaksa about it. We had no need to make him President. These policy issues arose even amidst this economic crisis. We can't live in a fantasy hoping that all these issues would be resolved in the near future. Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa had said he wouldn't be a part of the cabinet if both of us held cabinet positions. Just like every other occasion, President Gotabe Rajapaksa sacked us from our ministerial positions to prevent his brother from not being a part of the cabinet. Basil Rajapaksa has manipulated Gotabe Rajapaksa. It is regrettable that the president hasn't been able to avoid that. We have only followed the people's mandate. If sacking us is a response to that, then we will happily accept it. We wish to thank them for it. The president or the finance minister who advises him have decided that two ministers must be sacked to overcome the economic crisis. They assume that when we are sacked, there will be a massive inflow of dollars and fuel and that power cuts will end. If the country can overcome this economic crisis even that way, we will be happy. We used to control our words in the past, but now we can freely name the people who are responsible for pushing the country into this situation. In the future, we are willing to submit written evidence and reveal those in the government who are responsible for the damage caused to the country. In 1958, a book was published in the US titled The Ugly American. A Sri Lankan version of this book is being written. A US citizen is now deciding the fate of Sri Lanka. Therefore, we have launched a struggle to free our country from the US. We will produce evidence to show how the country reached this point. This conspiracy is being carried out intentionally. We have reasonable suspicion that they are trying to steer this country to how Indonesia was in 1997. The entire country says it was wrong for the country's leader to remove the ministers. I can't continue to serve in my ministerial position until the government serves justice. I can't fulfill my duties as a minister. When there is a red light warning of danger, will the problem be solved when we switch it off? We won't join the opposition. There is no need to be suspicious about it. We can't allow activists at grassroots levels who voted for this government to be stranded. We wanted to provide some assurance to them. That is why these 11 parties were brought together. After the 20th amendment was passed, when a journalist asked me whether someone will enter parliament under those provisions, I responded saying that a person with shame won't do that. But a shameless person entered parliament. I can't help that. We don't want to hold a ministerial position under this president again. As far as I know, the Prime Minister doesn't agree with this decision. The Prime Minister spoke to both of us. He was hurt. Their final decision had not reflected his stance. Basil Rajapaksa wants to spend his retirement in the US. His property is there. The US can arrest Basil Rajapaksa for money laundering. Why isn't that happening? 
That's because he must serve the U.S. Basil Rajapaksa's contract is to allow this economic crisis to aggravate so that the people will be upset just like what happened in Indonesia so that the U.S. can take over. He works with that intention in mind. He must commit that betrayal if he is to enjoy life there. Otherwise, he won't be able to avoid being arrested for money laundering. Money laundering will take over. There is a policy based decision. It was not a decision made just because of both of them. Susu Prema Jayanta also made some comments at a market. He didn't conduct an event. He was removed based on the president's policy that no one in the cabinet should criticize the government. If that was the case, then I believe it would have been the same for their removal after they held a massive convention and leveled heavy criticism against the country. There are instances in which they can level criticism. There are parliamentary group meetings and cabinet meetings. If they wanted to do something of this sort, they should have resigned and done it. That would have been better. If they feel that they can attack the government like this simply because they were brought into power, it can't be permitted. Everyone accepts that these are hard times for the government. When the ship is sinking, they shouldn't jump off it. They must support the crew on board the ship to bring it back under control. The crew shouldn't jump off the ship and allow it to sink. We don't feel that the president made this decision alone. The president invited the ministers and prime minister for a meeting yesterday morning. Everyone agreed that if the government is to move forward, they must hold one policy. If anyone doesn't fulfill the responsibilities entrusted with them, that opportunity should be given to someone who can do a better job. Minister Vasudeva didn't target the government or any person and level criticism. I don't feel like Minister Vasudeva participated in that discussion out of his own will. That was what I saw based on his remarks. The Prime Minister was present in that discussion. The President made the decision. There is a crisis in the Energy Ministry. If the situation was managed in a better way, I believe the queues for fuel and the power crisis could have been avoided. The ministers must want to ensure continuous supply of fuel instead of simply saying that the fuel can only last for two or seven days.